Uh, you first, Pop. All righty. Contact. Let's take a trip down memory lane and fly into the future. We're talking about the popular counterpart to the Flintstones, who are the Jetsons. The first episode of the Jetsons aired on September 23rd, 1962. Now, while it didn't garner massive success as the Flintstones did, it still managed to make a name for itself in TV media. The show also had a considerable influence on the viewers of the time and their imagination for the future. The Jetsons is considered a Hanna-Barbera masterpiece, since it widely revolutionized the future futuristic family life in animation. In this marvellous video, let's explore the history of this situational comedy, from its conceptualization to its many spin-offs. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. What's the cartoon show all about? The Jetsons first aired in the 1960s. Created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, it observed the life of a family all the way in the year 2062. Hanna-Barbera Productions had revolutionized the animated TV scene radically by the end of the 1950s. They had successfully put out well-received cartoons that took up the morning showtime slots. William Hanna and Joseph Barbera then wished to set in motion a show on primetime. The classic animated TV show The Flintstones came into being on primetime. Time. Cartoons on primetime were aired at night. The Flintstones followed the story of two prehistoric families that navigated all sorts of misadventures during the age of 10,000 BC. It portrayed the experiences of a typical working class family that were all set in the Stone Age. This attracted a huge audience of all ages and ultimately proved to be a hit. Following the Flintstones' success, the ABC network wished for Hanna-Barbera Productions to create another masterpiece in line with the family sitcom format. Hanna-Barbera pitched a counterpart show to the Flintstones in it. All the base ideas that had made up the Flintstones would be flipped and placed into the distant future, hence the Jetsons were conceived. The show ran for 24 episodes. The themes that were played on weren't only whimsical and fun, but also important social commentaries done tastefully. The futuristic cartoon was the first show that aired in colour on ABC. The Jetsons were sketched as the Flintstones, but in the space age of the year 2062. Similar were the woes of the Flintstones and the Jetsons. But while the Flintstones were shown using machines powered by dinosaurs, the Jetsons lay on the other end of the time spectrum. The cartoon consisted of retro-futuristic robots, flying cars, and quaint home devices. Let's talk about the Jetsons. As the introduction jingle goes, meet George Jetson, his boy Elroy, daughter Judy, Jane his wife. The family of the future was made up of George and Jane Jetson, their teenage daughter Judy, and their six-year-old son Elroy, along with their robot maid Rosie and their dog Astro. The base ground for the show was that irrespective of how we advance in civilization, humans would invariably find something to be unhappy about. For instance, George was always heard to be whining about his three-hour work day, which was a part of his three-day work week. The concerned work involved only pushing buttons during his shift, yet he wrote his boss off as a tyrannical taskmaster. In fact, in the first episode, we even saw Jane exercising her fingers from a workout tape playing on a flat-screen TV. This was to avoid getting push-button fingers in a world where the only muscles that needed to be exercised were your fingers. The only labour that was employed in the show was that of pushing buttons. Given the time when the show was created, Jane was shown to be complaining about household chores like doing the laundry, vacuuming and ironing, even if doing those chores meant merely pushing a button. Though the show took place in the 21st century, it was still made in the 60s. Evidence of this lies in all the regressive jokes about women and how they make such lousy drivers. George worked for Cosmo G. Spacely, who was the owner of Spacely Space Sprockets. George seemed to be the only employee of Spacely who loved screaming at him about how he was fired. But George was never really fired, since he was the only one present to push the buttons. Space Space Sprockets had a rival company, Cogswell Cogs, owned by H.G. Cogswell. The Jetsons lived in Orbit City, which consisted of houses built way above the Earth's ground. The characters were hardly seen walking in the show. They moved around on sliding chairs, conveyor belts, and aero cars that looked like UFOs. The names of places and the characters were usually derived from the age they were present in. Elroy's school was named Little Dipper. The dog was named Astro, and the local space bowling alley was named Milky Way Bowling Center. Even the technology shown in the series might have inspired some current-day 
gadgets. Though we don't have flying cars that fold down into suitcases just yet, that doesn't seem like a very far off possibility. The creators might have correctly predicted all the technology that is actually prevalent in the 21st century. Let's look at the similarities that we see in what was shown in the cartoon and what exists today. The most accurate of these is humans working in front of screens all day and complaining about their work day. We saw the Jetsons use the video phone which allowed them to take calls via video. Judy's electronic diary is similar to an iPad. The Jetsons even predicted micro technology in the show but not to the extent of explaining what allows the aero cars to fly around. We haven't yet reached the point where flying is the primary mode of transport. We aren't far from getting most of the work done by robots however. Everything was shown as fast paced, getting around was quick, food was delivered fast, even construction was fast. In the world of the Jetsons, humans were as always had been. The only difference lay in the fact that they had a lot more leisure time on their hands since all the work was undertaken by robots and gadgets. They didn't even have to cook. We saw Jane simply punch a few buttons to get a fine meal instantly. It was delivered by the machine named the Food Araka Cycle. The characters didn't even seem to have to bother getting dressed or brushing their teeth since all of those tasks were done by robotic hands. Making observations beyond the silly punchlines and somewhat simplistic plot, the question of why do the Jetsons live in the upper atmosphere is raised. Is it because Earth is destroyed beyond the point of livability? Keeping in mind works like the Time Machine by H.G. Wells, it's not easy to forget that some dystopian truths lie underneath the fleshy futuristic utopia. The Jetsons' life seemed undeniably comfortable and facile because humans hardly had to work anymore. All the gizmos and gadgets made their lives unnecessarily convenient and mind-numbingly monotonous. But the element of human experience remains the same in the show, where there still existed things like employees complaining about overbearing bosses, teenagers being infatuated by rock stars, the little ones in school, and the enjoyment of sports like ice hockey and football. One episode of The Jetsons was all about George and his boss attending a football game together. Even this sport wasn't played by human jocks anymore, the human teams were made up of robots, and these robots were controlled by their respective coaches who played either the defensive or offensive roles. The creative brainstorming of the Jetsons and the history of the characters. Let's explore the history behind the creators of the Jetsons. Joseph Barbera, who was previously a cartoonist, started to work at MGM Studios in 1937. This is where the Hanna-Barbera productions came to be. Audiences were graced with shows like Tom and Jerry by MGM, The Quick Draw McGraw Show and Yogi Gang, which ran as morning shows. For the release of the Flintstones, the creators sought after the popular American time slot between 8 to 11 p.m., known as prime time. Similarly, The Jetsons was created in the classic sitcom comedy style or sitcom style. Each episode was wrapped under 30 minutes and always came with the sitcom laugh track. The animation style used is known as assembly line limited animation. This animation style refers to the style of animation that uses the technique of traditional animation but reuses character frames. Also known as planned animation, we can see that the backdrops in the show were looped continually. Another characteristic of this animation style includes the bodies of the characters are completely still while only their face, hands and heads moved. Hanna-Barbera also decided to show their characters moving from one place to another on conveyor belts, which saved a lot of animation time. But this creative choice really drove home the futuristic feel of the show. The 60s was the time when the competition of the space race between the US and Russia was gaining momentum. This led to a rise in the science fiction craze, such as the new wave science fiction movie movement in literature. NASA had also announced their intention to put a man on the moon by the end of the 60s. The decade was of a new space age. The main creative aesthetic of the show can be described as retro futurism. This refers to an art style that portrays the creative depictions of the future as predicted by artists of an earlier era. In the case of the Jetsons, it was the mentality of the 60s envisioning what the year 2062 might look like. The creators of the Jetsons took a considerable chunk of inspiration from the book 1975 and the changes to come. By by Arnold Bark. We see how the show exhibits the future that was predicted in the 1960s. A lot of the gadgets we see in the show were inspired by those shown in the book. Several designs in the show, such as the cities and buildings, were inspired by the Googie style of architecture. This style of architecture is also known as ultra-modern. It represents post-World War II futurism in America. This era was also considered a golden age for futurism. The buildings in the show are identical to this style, with exaggerated angles of plastic and steel. All seem to be kick-started with the space age and idealized rocket ship type designs. The creators also drew inspiration from a popular TV show at the time, Book Rogers in the 25th Century. The Jetsons took the form of a stereotypical family from the 50s. This time
time was said to be the time of economic prosperity. The structure of the nuclear family was ideal at this time. Unlike the Flintstones, who were two couples without children, the Jetsons presented the idealistic American family. However, the artist did go through many concepts before settling on the Jetson family that we know of today. Some concept art showed only George, Jane and his boss Spacely as the main characters, while others showed either a daughter or a son. There are a few versions that showed two children and a dog. The final concept allowed for more representation and a wider reach. Let's talk about the characters in a little more detailed manner. George, who was voiced by George O'Hanlon, is said to be a family man who hates spending his time doing his job. His job consists of pushing three buttons during a three hour workday. He prefers to spend his time playing golf or just laying back enjoying a martini and a smoke. George is described as just another poor schmuck who always ends up making lousy decisions. A big chunk of the show portrays his relationship with his boss, Mr. Spacely, who thoroughly enjoys firing and rehiring poor George. There's a lot of similarities between the characters of George Jetson and Fred Flintstone from The Flintstones. Then we have George's wife, Jane Jetson, who was voiced by Penny Singleton. Jane is shown to be a housewife from the 1950s. She's shown to spend way more than George can afford and loves shopping at her favourite store, Mooningdale's. She is also shown to be a loving, devoted wife who does all her household chores to the best of her ability by pushing a button. Her character was a relatable one for the time of the show. Judy, the teenage daughter, was voiced by Janet Waldo. She loves all things that stereotypical teenage girls love. In episode 2, she even goes on a date with her favourite rock star named Jet Screamer, who looks like a futuristic counterpart of Elvis. Judy attends Orbit High School and is always trying to keep up with the latest fashion trends. She has a digital diary named Dee Dee, which keeps all her secrets. The youngest member of the Jetson family is their boy Elroy, who is voiced by Dawes Butler. Elroy is said to be six years old and somewhat of a genius. He attends Little Dipper Elementary School and always spends his time creating innovative inventions. Elroy and Astro make an adorable duo in the show. Elroy is the golden child who never gets in trouble with his parents. In episode one of The Jetsons, we see Jane bring home a new robot maid named Rosie. Rosie was voiced by Jean van der Pyle, who also voiced Wilma Flintstone. Rosie is an obsolete model of robot maids, so the Jetsons basically save her from being sent to the dump yard. The Jetsons also have a sweet dog named Astro. Even though the dog sometimes annoys George, he is still a loved member of the family. The cartoon's outro shows George walking Astro on a treadmill-like machine. Astro makes George trip over and he ends up stuck in the machine. All the while, George yells for Jane to stop this crazy thing. Astro can't talk, but he has a signature phrase of saying, rut row. Does that sound familiar? Hmm. Audiences of the show loved Astro so much that Hanna-Barbera gave his signature line to none other than Scooby-Doo. That's right, Scooby's iconic rut row actually came from Astro. Other characters that make an appearance on the show are George's human-like computer named Rudy, which stands for Referential Universal Differential Index. Henry Orbit is their building complex's superintendent as well. He has a helper robot who has a crush on Rosie, the robot maid. I think we should call it Camp Wana Sucha Gitchagumi Analo. Exploring the evolution, key differences between various versions of the series. The Jetsons that aired on primetime in the 60s ran for only one season, coming to an end in 1963. In 1974, Hanna-Barbera suggested a spin-off series of The Jetsons. The story would follow Elroy, now as a teenager, and Judy as a career woman. Sadly, this version was never created. In the mid-80s, Hanna-Barbera rebooted The Jetsons. They created a whole syndication package to be part of the futuristic world of Hanna-Barbera. The rebooted Jetsons were animated in the same style of the 1960s. The themes were much lighter, though. One could say that the original series proved to be a satirical commentary on human society, but the newer version was much more childish and silly. The reboot version had been given a higher budget and a production value following the success of the original series. This resulted in smoother animation, detailed backdrops and a lively colour palette. The animation was helped greatly by computer technology. The 1980s version didn't follow the 50s sitcom structure. Instead, the story focused more on the fantastical, absurd elements of science fiction. The 80s moved away from the fascination of the space age that the 60s had paid attention to and instead it followed storylines about how computers will influence the forthcoming years. All of the original voice actors returned to once again voice their dear characters. The difference in the vocal tones of the voice actors was slightly noticeable. The 60s versions had softer voices for they were at least 20 years younger. In the reboot, Rosie and Astro were given a fair amount of increased screen time in comparison to the 1960s. Also, a new character was added to the show. A tiny furry alien named Orbity who had springs for legs. The Jetsons theme song was also re-recorded. This tune had synthesized drum beats added to it to mark the 80s. An advantage of reviving a cartoon series is that the characters remain the same as they were. They don't age, only the quality of the show improves. 
with advancing technology. Interesting facts about the Jetsons. Let's explore a few interesting facts about the Jetsons that only veteran fans may know. Did you know the theme song for the Jetsons secured number 9 on the Billboard charts in 1986? The show was considered the single most important piece of the 20th century futurism by the Smithsonian Magazine blog. The show was never explicitly mentioned that it was set in 2062. Fans were made aware of this through signs and little clues seen in the cartoon. At the time of the character conceptualization, George Jetson went through 1,600 sketches and it took 16 months to design his final design. The same went for the rest of the family. The Jetsons were launched during the peak of the space race. It was smartly released the same year that President Kennedy promised to put a man on the moon. The show values the structure of the traditional nuclear family from the 1950s. It's an obvious fact that if the show had been released a decade later, Jane's character and her role might have been widely different. The women's liberation movement of the early 70s would have influenced the making of Jane, such is the case in later versions. In the Jetson movie that came out in 1990, Jane was also an environmental activist and in the comics released in 2017, she was a scientist. The 2017 DC comic issues of the Jetsons completely changed the feel of the franchise. This story followed a much darker path with a dystopian edge to it. It isn't well known that in these comics, Rosie has a downloaded conscience from George's mother who had passed away. In the original show, George, who worked only a three-day week, was presented as a hope for the future of audiences. A 40-hour work week was made the standard by the 1950s, but people looked at the future and hoped for increased leisure time and less work time. The show ended in 1963 after just one season. There's many speculations as to why the show didn't run as long as its Stone Age counterpart. At the height of the Cold War, there was a growing pessimism and a gloomy outlook towards the impending future. Critics even theorised that the 1950s family-style sitcom format felt overdone. As we mentioned, The Jetsons was the first show to be aired in colour by the ABC network, but only about 3% of the population at that time owned a colour TV set. So the vibrant colour and wacky structures of the Jetsons just didn't look attractive in black and white. The show might have failed to retain audience interest. The show just didn't sit with people the way it once did. The Jetsons were set up for reruns on a Saturday morning slot. This was the attempt to save the show from being completely scrapped. The reruns were quite successful as they reached a whole new audience base of kids enjoying their Saturday morning reruns by watching cartoons. Around 1973, the energy crisis hit the United States and this dramatically changed the way people envisioned the future. They expected the worst of a more dystopian reality, which is quite comparable to the world we're currently living in. In this way, the Jetsons provided a sliver of comic relief amidst all the bleak portrayals of the future that followed this era. My first vice presidential decision. Bingo! The Jetsons The Movie, 1990. In the mid-80s, a live-action movie of The Jetsons was attempted, but this project quickly fell through. In 1987, however, a film titled The Jetsons Meet the Flintstones was released. This wonderful crossover was received quite well by audiences. So then Universal Pictures purchased the film rights and helped produce a film with Hanna-Barbera. Thus, audiences were graced with The Jetsons The Movie in July of 1990. This movie closely resembled the 80s reboot with a few more dystopian characteristics. For instance, it's revealed that the reason orbit city is built in the sky is because of Earth's increasing atmospheric pollution. The plot follows the story of a new spacely space sprockets mining facility that has been opened on an asteroid. George is put in charge of this facility. He, along with his family, are sent down to live near the asteroid. In a typical turn of events, everything possible goes wrong with George's new job. It's then revealed that the new mining colony has been displacing a group of aliens known as the Grungies, a furry alien race who look like the adorable combination of colourful Ewoks and Furbies. These little aliens are fighting back to save their home. Once George realises, he stands by his morals and helps them keep their colony from being destroyed. George finally confronts Spacely, accusing him of only caring about how much profit his company makes. They come to an agreement to let the Grungies run the mining facility. They come up with the idea of creating new sprockets from recycling old discarded ones. George is promoted to the position of Vice President for Spacely Space Sprockets, but naturally without a raise. This movie was made for a younger audience. Nearly all the original voice actors remained, except for those who voiced Judy Jetson and Elroy. Judy was voiced by Pop star Tiffany. She was hired as Judy's singing coach but eventually ended up recording her entire role. This casting was considered somewhat questionable and seen as a promotional trick. The animation style of the movie was unlike anything audiences had seen on the Jetsons. It moved away from the limited animation and the characters were made more detailed and expressive. A few computer generated elements were even added to the mix. Though some might argue that the CGI images clash with the Jetsons classic aesthetic. Jetson! <laughs> 
Can we see another Jetsons reboot in the future? There might be another Jetsons reboot on the horizon. Warner Brothers has taken on an ambitious project of creating another Jetsons movie. This one would be animated. However, there were some rumours about a live action feature to be made that heavily involved Kanye West. That doesn't sound wholly unlikely, to be honest. Warner Brothers Studios brought Matt Lieberman on board as a script writer for the movie. He is working to create a whole new story for the Jetsons. Do you think we'll see a Jetsons live action film? Okay, buddy! Chickens in the oven! <laughs> Marvellous verdict. So we come to the end of our in-depth exploration of the Jetsons. What made the Jetsons really interesting is that it showed us a regular family functioning in an advanced futuristic setting. There weren't any stories about saving the universe and intergalactic wars, but simply the Jetsons living their lives. While at first glance the show may feel like a kid's cartoon, it actually spoke deeply to a lot of viewers. Even after six decades of its launch, the show has undeniably impacted the way we envision the future. The further we advance modernly, the closer the reality of the Jetsons comes. How far are we really from jetpack? cars that fold down into compact suitcases, and automated sidewalks that don't require us to move at all. Well, it raises questions for us. Is this the kind of future we actually want? And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.